All right, so today we're going up against death and taxes on the draw. However, we're going against the new updated revamped version, Squawk and Taxes, with Squadron Hawks, and of course the Force enchantment where creatures they control get plus one, plus one. Uh, is that going to be a nuisance? Is it going to be a threat? Is it something we can't handle as stone bladers? Let's find out today. So, of course, in the draw, and uh, I didn't know I was playing against death and taxes, first time playing against this person, but regardless, this is an amazing hand. Unless I was playing against combo, I mean, I got a brainstorm with multiple fetches, uh, and always seeing this first is awesome when I have two plows in my hand, because there's a good chance it's going to be death and taxes, which of course it was. Could have been like Bomberman, or I don't know, maybe uh, Stoneblade. Uh, not bad, because now I have something to pitch to. However, if I do pitch something, uh, I'm not going to be too happy pitching away my brainstorm. So, seeing they're probably going to play turn two something could be a Thalia. So, um, I didn't want to, you know, put up Arid Mesa for planes there. It is a Thalia. Now, I could force this. Um, I didn't want to because <laughs> I want to save this Brainstorm, um, you know, for using it, okay? Now, of course, here I believe I played eight planes. I can use Stoneforge uh, or I can just plow this. Uh, I like getting rid of this. Just starting to get creatures off the board, then I can develop Stoneforge. Because uh, then, you know, once I get rid of this, I can probably force the next card they have if it's going to be annoying. It just gives me much more uh, options to deal with. Like, now I'm in more of a control role because Thalia isn't taxing me. So, that was that. Okay, so they have another one. That's fine. Okay. And I thought this was interesting. They did this right here. Um, and because they did that, that completely changed. Well, I don't know if it completely changed. I know JIT is obviously amazing in this, but with this card and, and with Thalia, like I'm 110% getting Batter Skull because this has first strike. They're bigger, you know, they're beefier. It's just going to be a struggle to even connect with the JIT. So I know I can obviously uh, plow it, but. Now I still have my one mana up in case they do something I don't like. I didn't care about that. They can have that. You know, they had the force for it. Okay, they're playing factory. Now, I could, obviously, uh, I could force this. I could plow it. However, if I plow it, it's going to be next turn. Um, you know, plus this thing can get out of control quickly. I believe I did force this. Despite the fact that I had a great hand to brainstorm, I felt getting rid of this dude uh, just would have been very helpful. So that's what I did. Although I, I certainly could have let it go next turn, you know, plowed it, plowed it right there, and then of course still brought in my batter skull. Uh, but that's just, I wasn't going to be getting too much value out of that. I mean, I could, you know, what's it called? Force a vial if I wanted. I could pretty much force anything, but this card is, uh, they're playing this now too a lot. That card can get really out of control, so... I just felt like dealing with it right then and right there. Okay, cool. And let's see what they get. Now, the great thing about this game is that it's the first time I played against the Hawks, and there was a lot of different plays and lines and moves uh, and cool things you could have done. But I do think my experience as a Death and Tax player, I used to play it, uh, really, <laughs> and this is new. Like, if you click on it, see how it lights up green? Then you have to click Done. Like, I thought it was like a glitch or something. So if you haven't noticed that yet, this is brand new as of recording this. So uh, I'm like, why isn't this working? I thought like Batter Skull wasn't going to come into play. Either way. Okay, not the worst. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So uh, I'm going to want to play this land because if Thalia doesn't die, I can, uh, you know, play both lands. First, I attacked. Maybe they want to offer a trade. They didn't. And that's that. Now I can also return that to my hand and bring it back in if I want to. I can't force anything. That's fine. We knew they had that. I believe they get Batter Skull. Yeah. I still like the position I'm in, for the record. The reason I did this is because uh, w right now they have five mana and unless Thalia dies, they're not going to be able to cast this. So this was going to make their life so much more difficult. That's the reason why I did that. Now, if they want to block with Thalia, that's fine. They can do that. It's also going to unlock my force of will, which means I can force it. So uh, that was the reason for that. Yes. Yeah, oh, they thought about it. I'm like, yep, that's fine. You can definitely do that. Okay. 
Now I can force of will anything I want. Then they played this. I'm like, this card is going to be really annoying because they're going to get three more. Uh, they're going to have these flyers. They're going to start pinging me for two every turn. And I thought this was actually much more dangerous than Batter Skull because I'm gaining life. You know, I can bounce it. I can still block. I can bounce it. This was going to cause me a lot more trouble. So I decided to force of will this. And I know they still have their Batter Skull in their hand. So that was that. And that's perfectly fine. Now I have perfect information. Sounds good to me. Okay. I'm definitely not playing that. Okay. See, it's important that I don't play these lands because it makes it much more difficult. Like, if I'm not doing anything, I either have lands or I have, like, a counter spell, I have a swords. It makes it so much harder for the death and tax player to do anything because do I have a spell pierce? Do I have a counter spell? Do I have a force of will? But, <laughs> of course, right after I counter it, they get another one. So I'm like, well, they can have that. Get them all. So they only got two there. Okay. There's that. So now they have these two in their hand. Sure. Still like the position that I'm in. I'm pretty sure I say that every single time. <laughs> uh, a day late and a dollar short, as they say. Uh, once again, I'm just attacking. Sure. That was... That is perfect. The fact that they double block there just to kill that, I feel like that was a mistake on their part. Because I can always just bring it back to my hand and re-bring it in. Uh, they should have just chumped there, but the fact that they're taking a flyer off the table is so helpful for me because I can't block flyers. Uh, I feel like that was a very big mistake on their part. I don't want to equip it here. Like I said, I can just return it to my hand and uh, stoneforge it in. We'll play a land there. It's fine. All right, this was interesting. Well, they have five, they have six mana. So even if I kill this, like this didn't need to die. Even if it still lives, they're still going to have enough mana to cast a batter skull. So uh, this was pretty much a free kill and free life. So I returned it to my hand. I don't know if they didn't realize that or they didn't see the line or they didn't care if Thalia died. Maybe they have another one, but actually they don't have another one. We know their hand. Uh, I don't think that was a great attack on their part. Unless they were looking to cast one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, like they can still just cast either batter. Oh, they have they have the vial for Squadron Hawk. I, I don't see any reason where that's like a good attack, but it's okay. I play my own game. Sure. Like even when they attach it to this, my life is very high, so I'm still in a really good spot. The great thing about Stoneblade is that when you get deep into the game, you have you know you have ponders, you have brainstorm, you have Jace, uh, and I keep drawing lands. That's fine. I'm still digging where I am. Here, I'm pretty sure what I did is actually did I attack? Let me think. All right, uh, what's it called? I uh, attached it, equipped it. So that way, I can actually attack with it, and if they block. Uh, they're just gonna have to equip it, which isn't a big deal, but this is giving me more life, which is good for me They're getting life too, but I'm about to be <laughs> the one who's uh, on the receiving end So uh, I didn't mind doing that and I know their hand exactly. So there's that and there's that cool <clears throat> Like a lot of times in this game I have plenty of cards in my hand and I talk about that a lot. It makes it much more difficult to play against. Like anything with two is getting countered. Like I said, it could be a sword. It could be waiting for a good time to use it. Uh, it could be another force of will. It could be a counter spell. What they pick up here? Nothing. Well, so far that we know of. That's fine. So I'm going to take eight. Sure. Aha, and this is where Stoneblade really shines. Like, all sometimes you need is just a pawn. Even if I had a Brainstorm, I mean, look at my hand. Uh, like I said, it just makes it so much better. Now, let's see what we got. Uh -huh. Okay, so Jace, I could, you know, just... I could play Jace and, like, bounce some other runes. That doesn't do much. They're just going to attack and kill. I could bounce this. That doesn't do much. They're just going to equip it. What I want here is the Brainstorm, because I haven't played a land yet, which is always a good thing. Uh, so you can do that last, but pretty much what that allows me to do is take the brainstorm, shuffle away all the crap, 
play brainstorm and then I'll still have uh, a great hand to utilize my brainstorm. Like I said, this is why I keep lands in my hand very often. There's probably one of those I could have kept too, but uh, this land, this land, this game has been pretty uh, mana intensive already. So now let's fire this off. Aha. So there's a lot of lines here, uh, especially with two swords in the graveyard. But the first thing, I didn't want to do that yet because I realized uh, if I can take a few turns, I can barely easily turn the corner, especially with these cards here. So first thing I did was count my mana. I have one, two, three, four, five, and I haven't played a land yet. That's very important. So I can actually get Stoneforge. I can play it and I can equip it. And by doing that, not only am I going to gain life, I'll get two counters on it so I can kill Mother of Runes. Uh, and then after that, I can do some tricks with Batterskull. I can bring in Snapcaster. I can Snapcaster block that if I need to. I can Snapcaster Swords. Uh, do a nice tempo play. So uh, this was a very easy, I believe it was like, you know, Delta, Flooded Strand, you know, two lands here. Play this. I didn't need to crack it yet, but I will eventually need to. This is going to be a shuffle. Either way, I had to do it to cast it and equip it. And this is just another reason why I like this deck so much. Like there were so many plays I could have made there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's based upon usually the best play or your play style or what you think they're going to have, how your deck is handled against it. Uh, and once again, they have zero cards in their hand, so this makes my life so much easier. Even if they had one or two, I have to be thinking, like, do they have a Flicker Wisp? Do they have a Flicker Wisp? Do they have something else that's going to annoy me? So this doesn't matter that it dies. Uh, it's, you know, I can still do crazy tricks with uh, the other Stoneforge. Now here, I had the option of, I could have killed this, but that's not going to be a good idea because then they can just equip it to this next turn. Uh, the mother is going to be the most annoying. So what I decided to do is kill her right away because next turn if they get a Flicker Wisp and I go to, I know they don't play as many with this version, usually like two, maybe three, but I don't want to take that chance. So this is going to be the most annoying card, especially with a Snapcaster and a Swords in my graveyard. So let's get this mother off the board immediately. Once again, like I'm still not worried about this. Like I'm taking eight damage, maybe nine, 10, 11. But I mean, look at the, the resources I have. Like I talked about before, once I saw that Stoneforge and I had one, two, three, four, five, six mana open, I'm like, see, once again, they're playing this. Like that's completely unnecessary. One, two, three, four, five, unless they want a one, two, three. Yeah, I don't think they, they really need to. But hey, like I said, there's times where you don't want to play your lands. I believe that is definitely a time. Not blocking. Awesome. Okay, so I don't even know if I played this. I might have, but here, what pretty much what I want to do is uh, one, two, three, four, five. I can equip this and the jet. Uh, I think I did that this turn actually. I probably pondered and then I equipped. So I need five, six, seven. So I have five, six, seven, eight. Uh, actually, what I did is equip both of these because what that's going to allow me to do now is uh, get counters and kill one of these, and then they'll only have one guy left, so. And I wanted to keep Island open so I could keep up Snare. I didn't want to ponder, because the only thing I could hit is like a Force of Will. Uh, and even if I did that, you know, is I'd, I'd need to, I don't want to get rid of this, obviously, this is huge. And that means Spell Snare can be very good late game in this. This is what I'm talking about too with Spell Snare is that once it's past two, all bets are off, okay? So, once again, the Stone Forge is going to be used as just, you know, sacrifice. Sacrifice to the Death and Taxes gods. <laughs> all right, now we're actually going to kill this, okay? Because that allows us to kill a creature, okay? Once again, I think keeping up Spell Snare is much more important. They can't play anything on two because, well, they can, but I would counter it. Uh, that could be a Stoneforge. That could be a Thalia, which would be very annoying with Caracas. They could uh, they could block and bounce. They don't have any more of these. Uh, I don't think they play Revoker as much, but that's still a possibility. Okay, apparently they are playing nothing. They're just equipping. What did they, what did they draw? Once again, they have no cards in their hand, but it just makes it my life so much easier. So now I know what they're doing. All right, they have no cards in their hand. Uh, next turn is going to be very bad for them, assuming they don't draw something else. This game was really a lot about uh, using my life as a resource. Uh, it was a very important factor. Okay, so this is perfect. 
I'm gonna keep it exactly like like this because next turn, um, I don't want them messing with my Snapcaster Swords play. So I want Force of Will. So if they play something for two, I will counter it. If they play something that's annoying, I will pitch it to Force. Turn after that's gonna be Jace the Mind Sculptor. So exactly like this. I believe I played that in case for some odd reason I didn't want Jace I can shuffle. That is a time where I will do that in case I you know change my mind or that's something to keep in mind when you ponder and brainstorm. It's like if you have a shuffle, if you, excuse me, if you have a uh, fetch land for a shuffle and there's a card you're like, maybe I need this, maybe I don't, you know, keep it on top. Uh, if you need it, keep it. If you don't, you know, ditch it. Hell no. <laughs> See, this is exactly why I got Force of Will. Uh, no way is that happening. I don't need, because any more creatures becoming such more of a threat. I haven't seen one council's judgment yet. It is in my deck, but... um. I am Force of Willing this, and I am pitching Spell Snare because one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I would have, let's see, one, two, three. I, I actually could, could have, what's it called, hard cast that. So that is kind of a minor mistake on my part. A uh, one, two, three, four, five, and I would have had four mana left. Yeah, so I still could have. So there's a mistake on my part. This is why I always go over and rewatch these. However, this game was, I was actually getting really low on time, so I was playing much faster to my defense. Okay, so let's do the deed. Okay, now notice, this is a 3-3 because of this. Now what I can do is actually, a lot of people might say, well, you can just block it and then kill it. But I don't want to do that. Okay, first I'm going to get rid of this punk. Okay, this guy right here. This hawk, this punk. Can have your six life. And I decide not to block it, because look, once again, they have no cards in their hand, they have perfect information. Next turn, I can equip this, I can equip this, and I have a Jace coming up. They're in very big trouble. So, we don't want that off the board, they can have it. <laughs> so here is a Jace. Okay, so what I want to do here is equip everything. I don't need to, I mean, I could Fate Seal them, but getting this and this online is going to be a very big deal especially getting more counters on it. Uh, then there's going to be three counters on that. What I leave open. Okay, cool. So this, I actually have one more island. So now I can get island or planes. So I can pretty much bluff, you know, anything at that point. Okay. Let's see what they have. Paying costs. Okay, returning it to their hand. And speaking of mis 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 makes, mistakes, uh, I didn't want that Tundra, obviously. And I actually got this, because uh, if they wasteland me, I don't mind. I have so much land right now, I'd rather have, have them have less. Uh, but what I decided to do here, uh, that I didn't realize, <laughs> was uh, play Jace. And bounce it, okay? Now... What I could have done is just attacked and pumped it once. I mean, I don't think it's that bad. You know, this allows that they uh, they don't gain any life. Uh, they can't really kill Jace. I don't think they play any console's judgment. Uh, they could have like a Flicker Wisp, but I can kill it. I mean, so that was the other line. Like I said, I was playing fast at this point. It was game one. I'm like, geez, I'm already at 13 minutes. Uh, it's kind of rare that I play slow. But there was a lot of decisions in this one, so uh, I wasn't taking a ton of time thinking all of them through. But even with that in mind, like they can wasteland that is fine. They like playing their cards, so I, I kind of baited them into that. Like when I got that, I'm like, yeah, I'll get a Tundra. I really don't need it. I don't have many lands left. That's fine. This is where Spell Pierce is nice. Hmm. Now I'll draw three cards. Okay, so this was a tough one. I don't remember exactly uh, what I put back or like the best way of doing this because uh, let's see, all these cards are pretty much really good. Uh, it was probably like an Aired Mesa and a Ponda. Like I said, it was kind of quickly. I'm like, I just want to keep the good cards in my hand. So what I decided to do here is attack. Once I figured out, wait a minute, I'll just pump it. You know, they can keep doing their thing. Get a plus two, plus two, sure. Uh, 
I guess I certainly could have pondered here. Probably would have been a good idea, but uh, like I said, I'm just I'm going quick now. It's uh, they're in very big trouble to say the least. Sure, that does pretty much almost nothing at this point. Let's draw three. Okay, so it's, I don't remember, you know, something. <laughs> I didn't even want to put a fetch land there. I'm like, I'll just keep everything, play another true name. Or not, oh yeah, equip, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, yeah. So that's the reasoning behind like, James, why did you just like put fetch lands there? You're going to be seeing them again. Why didn't you at least ponder, uh, look for a force? Uh, at this moment, I was just about like, I just need to kill this person. You know, any creature that comes in is getting killed. Uh, next turn, I probably could have pumped up to 16 if I wanted to. <clears throat> sure. And they uh, conceded there. So uh, that was a, a really fun game. I like this new little tech they got going on here. Uh, the interesting when it comes to Stoneblade is that it can be very challenging when they have a lot of flyers. I feel Spell Snare is even better now against Death and Taxes. I know, call me crazy, but uh, you'll see what I mean in the next game. Even before when I was playing against Death and Taxes, I always uh, I keep in my one Spell Snare and then I bring in another. Because so many times what happens is they bring their vials up to three. And now with these deck lists... They're not playing, most of them from what I've seen, don't play Cavern of Souls. So they can have like their measly, you know, two drop from that. But like I said, it usually ticks up. The games usually go very late and Spell Snare becomes very powerful. Now it hits Squadron Hawk, hits uh, Stoneforge. It hits the, uh, if they're playing Sarah Avenger, if they have any, what's it called? The um, Pything Needle, you know, the artifact I can't think right now. Uh, Pyrexian Revoker uh, and whatever else it is. Either way, it's a lot of stuff to hit, but let's go to game number two. Here we are on the draw again since we won, and this hand isn't the most exciting thing in the world, and I kind of like it. However, I did notice that my opponent, I didn't notice, let me rephrase that, wasn't playing, they didn't seem to play too many non-basics. Uh, the thing with back to basics is I usually will bring it in, uh, again, keep it in, that is, against death and taxes. They have so many, let's see, they have four ports, four wastelands, and usually three Caracas. That's 11 lands. That's like a little bit under half of their lands are non-basics. Uh, when you can choke them on mana, it really makes a huge difference as you go to stretch the game out much longer. It'll make your spell pierces better in game one. Uh, and when they can't do as much mana, you're pretty much taxing them as well. So uh, like I said, this wasn't the most exciting hand in the world, but I did decide to keep it. Uh, I do have force in case they do something I don't like. Yes, I keep all four forces in. Uh, they have many haymakers in the second game. It could be Cataclysm. Uh, Vials, sometimes you want to force, which I did right here. Now, I could have actually pitched back to basics, seeing they did have a, a basic planes, uh, but I just went with that because I didn't want to... Uh, and then if I had a force of will, I'm pretty much... That is an amazing draw. Let's play a Pluted Delta here in case they get a port so they can go nuts with that. I was waiting for that second planes to tap. Yep. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. It happens. <laughs> One good turn deserves another. Okay. You know you want to do it. <laughs> oh, I love Spell Snare. I'm telling you, this card is so good. But yes, I do use two against uh, Death and Taxes game two and three. Okay, so here I have the option. I could keep this tap down, but if I don't do that, um, well, I can play True Name, but I just want to start getting pressure on them. So uh, True Name it is here. If they want to port my planes next turn, that means they're probably not doing a whole lot. They only have two cards in their hand now that they've shown me that. I'm like, oh my god, I can see exactly what's going to happen here. They're going to untap their planes, okay? Then they're going to port me. And then I'm going to choke them on mana, which I always do. Uh, let's play the planes here, I believe. After I attack. I must have played the planes. I don't see why I wouldn't. 
This is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, if this game goes longer, spoiler alert, it doesn't, uh, that's going to really affect them. Plus, if they pick up more non-basics, it's really going to affect them. Okay? Not a bad draw if you ask me, but it's still not a creature, so they're not doing a whole lot. Uh, and they have one card in their hand. I mean, they're not playing it. It could be a uh, swords. It could be the, uh, the the white force. Is it virtue, I think? Force of virtue. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I did it again. Yeah, we're playing that. We are certainly playing that. See, even games where they have basics, this can be very helpful. Let's uh, get some counters, and let's remove them. Oh, it, it, I don't know why it didn't show that. Excuse me. Next turn. Okay, the reason why I didn't do that right away is because they don't have a vial on three, so they can't, like, flicker with something in and, like, stop me from activating it. So that's the reason why I waited there. Now I can remove it. And when I went to remove it, they conceded. <laughs> and that was that. So uh, nice little game against Death and Taxes. Uh, if this game went longer, this would certainly be even uh, more devastating against them, I believe, especially with the uh, non-basics. Like I said, this happens a lot. Uh, it can stop you from getting ported. They don't have fetch lands, so yeah, it's kind of like split 50-50 when it comes to non-basics and basics, as you can see pretty much right here, but... Um, I believe that's a very helpful card. It's going to stop you from getting ported. It's going to stop them from doing crazy stuff, from using their mana, uh, from using uh, Caracas with Thalia. Either way, that's just my sideboarding against it, and uh, it's worked very well. Spell Snare was awesome. Uh, without that card, that would have been very difficult. They would have had, you know, three or four more Hawks. Uh, they would have had a Thalia there. And, um, yep, that's that. Couldn't ask for better draws. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, regardless of what the draws were, I would have stuck in there and played it out because that's just the way I play. Hope you enjoyed that. There were a lot of fun plays and lines to kind of think about and go through. And that was uh, Stoneblade versus Squawk in Texas. Thank you for watching.